I'm Jay Lyman, Senior Analyst with 451 Research, now part of S&P Global Market Intelligence. Um, and I'm talking today about how small organizations, SMBs and smaller enterprises, can take advantage of cloud native technology such as containers and Kubernetes. The main thing for smaller organizations to think about when it comes to cloud native technology like containers and Kubernetes are developer uh, speed and productivity and IT efficiency. For developers, containers offer a simpler, lightweight package for applications and their dependencies. And this can allow developers to go faster, to onboard faster, and to focus on code and software development rather than configuration. In terms of efficiency, Kubernetes can be used to manage and orchestrate containers and container clusters, um, even at large scale, uh, generally with smaller IT teams. And you can do this by taking advantage of cloud native characteristics such as API provisioning, auto scaling, and other automation. So those are the main benefits around developer speed and IT efficiency. We also see cloud native advantages such as um, cost and security. The cost benefits center on the efficiency of slicing up virtual machines, the same way that we use VMs to slice up physical servers. And the security benefits really center on a smaller, lighter weight packaging um, in containers that represents less attack service. And containers are also better suited for um, iterative updates. So all of these things contribute to uh, the continued growth of cloud native. And uh, these benefits are available to um, not just large enterprises, but also smaller organizations. Well, Kubernetes does offer advantages around IT efficiency and application portability, it's still a relatively new technology, particularly when it comes to SMBs and smaller enterprises. Um, and, and Kubernetes also represents a great deal of complexity. Um, a do-it-yourself Kubernetes deployment entails making lots of choices on uh, the components and the configuration and maintenance of those pieces within Kubernetes. Things like Helm scheduling, Prometheus monitoring, um, etcd data store. Um, in order to address some of these complexity challenges, a lot of organizations are turning to managed services uh, that help uh, make some of those choices uh, for the organization or at least narrow the parameters um, and, and abstracting and automating a lot of the configuration um, uh, toil uh, that can come with Kubernetes. Um, the bottom line is that managed services can help uh, smaller organizations to leverage Kubernetes, get the benefits of it without necessarily becoming experts in Kubernetes or hiring um, an army of Kubernetes IT operators, which would be difficult and expensive. Modern application containers arrived in the industry at the right time as organizations were seeking the best way to package and deploy applications in the cloud. And this good timing has led to much broader adoption and, and pretty deep adoption of containers um, in the enterprise. Um, we're also seeing the same sort of good timing for Kubernetes. Um, and this time the driver is the use of hybrid and multi-cloud infrastructure that includes on-premises, private cloud, and public cloud environments. Kubernetes, um, in addition to being a container orchestration framework, is also a distributed application platform. So this makes it a good match uh, for running applications across different types of infrastructure. Um, why do organizations want to run in different places? Well, usually it's based on a number of different factors, including cost, performance, data sovereignty, or geographic location. So as organizations run in these different environments, they wanna have consistency. And Kubernetes 
is serving as that single pane of glass uh, from which to manage applications across all these hybrid and multi-cloud deployments. Larger enterprises have been leveraging cloud-native technology and methodology to achieve their digital transformation. So this means they're leveraging containers and Kubernetes to move faster, to manage IT infrastructure more efficiently, and to also build in uh, readiness and organizational agility so that these companies can respond uh, to changes in the market, whether that's a technology uh, change, a security issue, or a global event like the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, but just because smaller organizations don't have large numbers of uh, developers, IT ops, or DevOps teams, doesn't mean they can't take advantage um, of cloud native technology and pursue their own digital transformation. Um, I think the other thing to remember is that cloud native technology is maturing and evolving rapidly. Um, given the number of uh, companies, uh, developers, and end users uh, that, are, that are working on it. Um, and so that's something that the smaller organizations can take advantage of. Um, and, and one of the examples of this maturation and evolution of cloud native um, is the types of applications that are being containerized. I think most people think containers are limited largely to stateless and web applications. Uh, but our research, our Voice of the Enterprise DevOps survey in 2020, showed that 56% of organizations said half or more of their containerized applications were stateful. Um, and so this is being driven by uh, the development of, of Kubernetes, where we see now support for persistent data storage volumes, um, and the desire by end user organizations to leverage cloud native for more of their applications and not just limit it to those stateless and web applications. Um, bottom line, smaller organizations can take advantage of this larger community development and innovation in cloud native without necessarily having to uh, contribute large amounts of money or developer time or heavy participation in these projects. Um, those, the software continues to evolve, and I think smaller organizations can take advantage of that.